Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video, and this is a follow-up to a video I did back in May. Uh, back when I got this, the VR Go headset. I can put my phone in it and enjoy VR experiences. Um, back then I talked about how that was just my first impressions, and I ran into a few problems with it, which I have now fixed, and I do use this thing off and on, but I wanted to give like a final thoughts now that I've had it for a few months. How often do I use it? Um, not only that, but um, a couple of people, like for example, Alan Stewart, Maimeister, have talked about PlayStation VR, just the VR thing in general, and Alan talked about how he's got the Samsung uh, VR headset, or the Gear VR, for putting his phone into, and uh, he enjoyed it for a while, but then he doesn't really use it anymore. So that made me also think, oh yeah, I should talk again about this thing. Uh, let me just pop it out of its case. I really like the fact that this thing is so compact. It's a little bit tricky to put back in its case, but it's manageable. Um, yeah, and uh, as per what I talked about before, open it up quite easily, if I can get the first clip undone. There we go. And it does kind of the scuba mask thing. You just pop it out on your head, phone in, and away you go. Um, now, what is it that I like about it? Well, it does deliver a really good VR experience. And I have used it, and in fact I'm going to talk a little bit in a minute about one of the most unusual applications that this thing was totally valuable for. Um, when I did my video the first time, I was very impressed. I played a few games, I did sort of weaving my head back and forth stuff like you do with these things. And one of the problems I ran into was with the Google Maps feature, like I had this thing strapped on, and there's a button here that you can use to kind of move forward in the map. And no matter what I was doing, this button never would respond. I mean, there's a little, uh, you probably can't make it out there. There's like a little thing in the nose area. When you push the button, it's supposed to advance or like pressing on the screen of your phone. It wasn't working. So I fixed what that problem was. I found out what the issue was due to, and I thought I better share that um, information with people. Here's my phone, and what I was doing was just sliding it in, lining it up, boom, 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 and away you go. Let's make sure I get this thing in here. Whoop, there we go. Um, working great, but this button thing would never really work, and I could see inside it was making contacts. What was the problem? I discovered that it's actually due to the case that's on the phone here. Um, if I peel this thing off, this sort of rubber grip, well it's not even a grip, it just it just acts as like a, a very slight outer casing there. There's the back of the phone. Now, with that small adjustment, if I put this in now, for whatever reason, that thing touching the screen is definitely registering. So that's all I had to do, is just take that thing off and then use this in uh, maps and various other things that required the pushing of the button. So, uh, if anybody runs into that problem where your phone is not getting recognized, just take your little, just take your case off. I guess there's probably enough of thickness of the material there that I suppose it's kind of squeezing, I guess everything is just a little bit under pressure in there and that button is just not, it doesn't have enough room or enough give. So, thought that was worth sharing. Um, that was the first major, um, not headache, but the first major hurdle I overcame with these things. Other things I like are the VR apps. Now there's some really good ones and there's some not so great ones. In fact, there's quite a lot that are in the kind of meh territory. Uh, to talk about the good ones first though, um, one that I recommend is called AAA VR Cinema Cardboard SBS, something like that. I'm going to put a link below as to what the link is to it in the Google Play Store. Uh, essentially what that is, you can view in, uh, videos and things like that in this SBS style, which means side by side. Essentially what they've done is they've recorded video, they've got both of the images side by side, you put them onto the memory of the car, of the phone, and then you play it with this VR cinema, and you can adjust how much of your field of view it takes up, which is awesome. And I had to do that because I was trying out like uh, VR YouTube and VR various other applications and when the videos are streaming through Wi-Fi onto your phone they don't look all that great. I mean there's a really cool one out there of Assassin's Creed Syndicate because of course it's me. 
Um, and there's a thing where you're kind of following Jack the Ripper through the streets of London and it's all slow motion and there's birds flying over your head and you're seeing the crime scene and then you're chasing Jack the Ripper down these hallways. It looks cool, but when it was streaming to my phone, it looked awful. It was like a really low pixely car, uh, um, kind of like a, a, somebody had copied it in the lowest possible resolution and just shoved it onto my phone. So what I have found I had to do, I have to actually um, take files, take video files that are SBS side by side, which can be massive, um, like multiple gigabytes in size, stick them onto the hard drive of this thing, and then use VR Cinema and then play them, and they look a heck of a lot better. Uh, so I've done that, and that's really the best way to do it. Um, now, other apps that I really recommend, there's Titans of Space, which if you're into astronomy like myself, it's gold. You're actually traveling through space. You start off, I think, with the Earth and the Moon in front of you, and you can uh, move your head around to there's like a control panel in front of you. When you hover over the, the next button, it'll then pull you away from the Earth and over to Mars or over to Venus or Mercury or Jupiter or Saturn or through the rings, all that kind of great stuff. And you can either hover your, like you can look down and eventually a little timer, oh, okay, click kind of a thing. I guess like um, connect, I think, worked that way. You kind of hover and then it knows to like give it some time and then it'll, oh, okay, that's a button press. Or you can actually say, no, I've got a little uh, button on this thing and I'll press that instead. And at each destination, you can actually pull up information about what's the history of Ganymede and who was the first person to discover it. Really, really cool. Highly recommend Titans of Space. And a lot of games, a lot of games, use that same uh, interface where wherever you're looking is what happens on the screen. Like you look over here, all the attention is over there. You look over there, all the attention is happening there. Uh, a game that uses that really well is called uh, Battle 360 VR. I, I can't really hold it up and show you, but again, links down below. And on it, you're kind of on a, a World War II destroyer and you're shooting the, the cannons at all the airplanes in there. As you're looking, that's where it knows to shoot. Um, that's really cool. The first few times, a complaint that I have is that like 95% of all the VR games that I tried were exactly like that. Wherever you're looking is where you're shooting or shoveling or picking up or dropping bombs or whatever. And that kind of got a little tired after a while. Um, there are some really good space games that look pretty cool in VR for the, the Google Play Store. But they mean dropping a couple bucks on them, and I was like, okay, I'm a little uncertain about this. What I would ask is if anybody out there has got really, really good VR games that they can recommend, please let me know in the comments below because I want to give this thing its proper shake as a gaming device. But my experience so far of trying out free ones hasn't been stellar. Now I looked around online as to, okay, other than the looking and either hitting the button or it just always automatically shoots or drops bombs where you're looking mode, surely there are games that use a controller. And there are, now there's all kinds of different controllers out there, um, some that you can buy and some that are kind of jury rigged together. In fact, uh, somebody even showed you can actually sync through Bluetooth a PlayStation 3, possibly even PlayStation 4 controller to this thing. So I was thinking, oh, quick, okay, great. I'll get a bunch of games that use the controller and then I'll shoot and jump and fire and do all kinds of different things with a full-on controller. Uh, and maybe that's what some of those more expensive VR games actually use, but I didn't find they were very, there wasn't much of a success ratio. Like for example, one of the games I've got on here is Fractal Combat X, which is about the only game I could find that actually used the thumbsticks. And it was good. I mean, you're flying this sort of jet stealth fighter thing across the desert and you need to intercept these things, pick up certain items and shoot down bad guys and that kind of stuff. And I was always thinking, okay, how exactly would a VR game work in that interface? Like, are you behind the aircraft? Are you in its cockpit, which should be the case? Maybe these uh, Google VR cardboard type games are not capable of like the PlayStation or Vive level of, of detail. So I thought, okay, I'm going to curb my expectations. So I tried out one, this um, uh, Fractal Combat X, and it was pretty good, and it did use the thumbsticks. I could actually move the airplane around. Now, every time I'm kind of hovering behind the thing, like a third person perspective, but I can still look up and down and around as the aircraft is in front of me. So that was kind of cool. Um, but it didn't 
really seem to have a lot of button use, so it wasn't a great experience. And that's where I kind of stopped with the gaming side of things. I thought, hmm, other than the all the action is happening where I'm looking type games, like that World War II one, uh, ones that use a controller don't seem to be very successful. So again, I ask out there, if anybody's got, like, say, for example, Bangkok Ian, you are the VR expert. What are some games that use a controller like a PS3 or a PS4 controller synced to a phone that I can play something more than just, you know, shooting lasers in the, exactly the direction that I'm looking right now? I'd like to do that. Um, speaking of Bangkok Ian, he just recently posted a video where uh, he was talking about a couple of really good arcade games that are worth checking out. And he had his 360 camera in uh, a bar with him in Thailand or somewhere nearby. Maybe with Bangkok, uh, whatever. Um, and he was uh, kind of looking around, or I was watching that video with this VR headset on, and I was thinking, this is really cool. I'm sitting in a bar with Ian. That's so cool. Um, yeah, I, I kind of hoped to, you know, look out the window and see a bit more activity or something, but that's a really good application. I do like what other things you can do beyond gaming with VR and VR headsets. Now, on that subject, I'm going to add in, or I'm going to put down below a website link because it's really the only way that this can be done. Um, back in the 90s, uh, does anybody remember Star Tours? It was, a, it was the first Star Wars ride at Disneyland, and I think it's been upgraded and changed a few times, and it's really, really cool. It's one of those, like, you're sitting in, like, a shuttle, and you're flying, you know, a, a, across, I think for the, for the first one, for Star Tours, you're in, like, um, an asteroid field and the Death Star, that kind of stuff. And what's really cool is, at this link, they've actually got Star Tours, the ride, in VR. So you can, you can put this thing in your headset and you can actually start the ride and you're sitting in the seats and you're watching that screen and it's even got like the little um, droid who was there to kind of uh, welcome you aboard and say okay now we're gonna strap in and oh no it's Darth Vader that type of thing that's all happening in front of you it's really cool uh, there's also a Back to the Future ride one I, I rode the Back to the Future ride uh, in Universal's playground I can't remember the name of the park uh, I rode it back in the early 90s, whenever it first ran, and it was pretty cool, but I remember thinking um, it's a little bit distracting with everything going on, and somebody's taken all of that footage, they've taken the ride itself, and you're sitting in a, like a very small mock DeLorean with a little screen on it, and Biff Tannen shows up, and various other people show up on the screen and sort of tell you, you know, I'm, I'm going to get you, McFly, and as you're going through the ride, it's a very visceral, visceral experience, if a bit distracting. With the um, with that AAA Cinema app I just told you about, you can actually grab that footage, put it onto the hard drive of your machine of your phone, and you're in the ride, and you've got the DeLorean cockpit. Somebody's actually mocked up like a uh, a two D rendered, or I think it's maybe three D rendered, but static uh, uh, DeLorean cockpit. And Biff Tannen shows up on the screen, and various others, Doc Martin, uh, Doc Brown, and all them. Um, and you can look around and see the actual ride. And I think there's like um, dinosaur ones, and uh, I think Captain EO, the Michael Jackson one from the 80s. Somebody's ripped all that footage and put it onto a format that you can actually copy to your phone and, and enjoy the ride. So that's really cool. I like that. But as I mentioned earlier, now here is a very cool real-world application I use this thing for. Um, you can actually, now that I've figured out how to make the button work for the Google Map app, um, I can go to places that I've been in, in the past, like uh, various places I used to live in the UK, and I've gone to a lot of those towns that I used to uh, frequent. It's really cool to walk around and see how the town looks these days. That's pretty cool. But in addition to that, uh, a few months ago, my friend and I went to the Northwest Pinball Show, which was in Tacoma, and we decided to take the train down just to try it out differently. The year before, we had driven, and it was a bit long of a drive. I mean, that's, that's, that's a long way to go for somebody to be behind the wheel the whole time. And he said, well, I said to him, well, I'm going to take the train. And he said, yeah, okay, sure. And I looked on the map, and I thought, you know what? The train station to where the convention center is is not that far. It looks like we... Like, I know we could have hailed a cab, but I just thought, well, maybe we could walk that. I wonder if there's a way to test that out. 
And you know what I did? I actually strapped this thing on and I went in VR to the train station and I walked up the street and I looked around and I realized, hey, we can do this. We don't need to hail a cab. We can actually walk it. In fact, I'll, I'll show you a rudimentary version of how that worked right now. This is where the Amtrak station is in Tacoma. It's on uh, Puyallup Avenue, and I looked at the map and I thought, well, hang on, if we just walk along Puyallup here uh, and just keep going and going and going, there's like some kind of an overpass there, those big orange lines, um, and the, tr the convention center where the pinball show is is right here. So, yeah, that doesn't look very far. I think it, it was maybe... I want to say maybe three or four kilometers at most. So I thought, well, yeah, if we're going to do this as a, as a cab, then it's going to be a very short cab ride. So to heck with it. Uh, let's just zoom in. And this is the part that I did in VR. What I did here is basically, and again, we're doing this on the PC itself, but imagine um, you're actually wearing the VR headset and this is your view. There's the Amtrak station. Not a problem at all. Uh, with my mouse, I can turn and look around, but basically with the headset, I, I did this. I just looked around and I thought, okay, so if we're standing at the station, there's Puyallup Avenue. Um, let's just see what it's like to walk. And, uh, you know, I'm doing it here with the mouse, but with the VR headset, I'm basically just clicking along and seeing what would this be like to walk. Now, I'm going to speed it up a bit here so you don't... Uh, sit with me for the full length that it took to walk it. Um, I would say grand total, it was maybe 15, 20 minutes at most. And I just thought, well, heck, we can walk that. Uh, now, when we got here, this is that overpass, that sort of orangey line. And I thought, well, heck, that didn't take very long in VR to get to this spot. And I had a little look around. And it was funny, later on being there, uh, I told my friend, hey, I've seen this overpass. I know we're on the right route here. So let's just keep going. Now we're under the overpass and uh, speeding along here. And uh, when I got to this spot, I noticed every once in a while, there were these orange signs, uh, orange and brown. There it is there. I'll just, um, I'll step back a bit here because I, I, that sort of stood out to me and I thought, okay, let's look for those orange signs when we get there. And you may or may not notice down at the bottom here, it actually says convention center and it gives the distance. When we were actually there in real life, I had a heck of an experience telling my friend, and then we turn right and we go down Pacific here. I had a heck of an experience telling my friend, um, I know we're on the right path because I've seen these, there's another one. I've seen these orange signs uh, in VR. I know we're on the right route. And it, again, there's a convention center. It was super cool. It was just like, this is a strange experience to have walked it in virtual reality and now to be walking it in actual reality. I don't know what the opposite term would be. I got to this point and I think I was thinking, okay, I must be getting close and booted along a bit longer here. You can see on the corner there, that's the convention center. So, and I, I as I'm doing it here with the PC, I kind of messed up. I went in the wrong direction, but, uh, but that's a nice thing with, with all of this, I can explore as if I'm there on foot so that I know, okay, don't try and go along the railway tracks, go down this road here, and the convention center will be on your left. So that's what I did. There it is over there. And again, once we were actually physically located there, that's what I did. I saw it, we turned up this corner, went up the street, and boom, we're at the convention center. I had walked it in virtual reality, and eventually I walked it in actual reality. So that was pretty cool. Just being able to tell my friend, hey man, I've walked this in VR. I know how to get there. That, that was a pretty cool experience. And, and that to me made this thing totally worthwhile. Like that's a, a real world application. And I just thought, yeah, that's pretty cool. That, the rides, the being able to wander around places that I used to go to back in the day, that, that's pretty cool. But I'd really like the gaming side of things to be a bit better. I'd like to be able to use a, a controller and, I don't know, do some of this stuff. I mean, I'm not really expecting to have, you know, some of the things that are going on with uh, the more expensive headsets, but I don't know, driving a tank or doing something that looks like low poly, like 8-bit style, I, I don't mind. Heck, I, I know for um, 
Bangkok Ian mentioned ages ago, Battlezone for PlayStation VR actually released an update where you can play Battlezone the new game with the old Atari style like vector type graphics. And I was just like, oh man, I want to do that. That would be so cool in the in the tank with the old 1979, 80, whatever, the, the old style graphics. I would be so on board that. And I thought, surely somebody's made like a Tron tank game or something where you're strapping this thing on and you're using your controller to shoot. I can't find one. I've found a few tank games. They don't seem to work very well. And I don't know, I, I really wish there was such a thing. If somebody, again, can maybe recommend to me some titles that are worthy of the purchase, I don't mind dropping some cash, but it seems like all the free ones have been experiences, and so I don't know that I really want to jump on board anything that I have to fork over some cash for. Maybe that makes me a cheapskate, I don't know, but um, we'll see. But as far as the headset itself, I'm very, very happy with this. I have used it in ways that I never really thought I would use it, so kudos to uh, VR Go makers for giving me a, a very cheap, affordable headset that I have used in ways that I was not expecting. Um, and definitely, if you run into the problem with that little button thing like I did, just take the case off your phone and then stick it in there. You will have no problem at all. All right, well, there we go. There's a follow-up and final thoughts of this VR Go headset. Really like it, love the price tag. And now that I've worked out a few of the kinks, uh, Definitely gets a high recommendation from me. All right, until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.